So a big thank you to the, for the organizers for having me here and uh, thank you all for coming. It seems like we are almost more than half of the entire conference in the small room, which is, which is cool. So um, yeah, f I want to start with a question. How many of you have some working exper experience with uh, computer vision or image analysis? Oh, that's quite a lot. Great. So uh, yeah, as, uh, as they said, I'm also from the university. So this presentation will be a little bit more like a lecture and less than a talk. So what I'm trying to do is I will pitch 3D scene understanding as an interesting problem. I will talk about what it is, uh, why it's important, why it's hard, and how deep learning might help us to solve this in a convincing way. So 3D scene understanding, what is this? In my personal pr perspective, 3D scene understanding is kind of the most important problem of computer vision, kind of the holy grail. This is basically to, have to give machines the ability that humans and animals have to go into an environment, look around, and then get some understanding on, on what's happening around them. Um, in a more formal way, uh, I, I like to see this as building a map of the environment. And what do I mean wha with a map? So a map is basically, in, in a computer science way, a list of objects in the world. And these objects can have semantic properties, and they can have geometric properties. Um, semantic properties kind of what, what object it is, and geometri geometry is where it is, the shape, size, and orientation, and so on. So in order to build robotics that can act in the real world, or like self-driving cars, which, which will drive you around, it's very important to build maps with both semantics and geometry. Imagine, for example, that I put you in a room, you only have a map, and you, uh, you're bli blindfolded and have a map, you're, you're about to navigate and solve a task. So I ask you to pick up a remote control under the coffee table. You need to know both what is the coffee table, where it is in the room, uh, kind of a, it's a very high pre pre precision here. Um, so sometimes in vision we create maps which contain only semantics and no geometry. Well, in this case, some geometry, but I would rather sit in a self-driving car which can localize other cars in the real world than just localize them in an image. Some other kind of maps are, uh, they contain geometry, but they don't contain a lot of semantics. So th this is, a, is an example of a point cloud. You can construct this with structure of motion in vision. Um, so what this tells the computer, this map, is that here's, an, here's something, here's something, here's something, here's something not very useful to interact with the world. So we really need maps with semantics and 3D geometry. This is 3D scene understanding. So for a long time, computer vision researchers thought that semantics was the real hard part. Like the images are really complex, very high dimensional. One, one object can look, uh, it can look very differently from many viewpoints. <laughs> very non-linear problem to solve. But then deep learning re revolution came, and then we, now we have things like this off-the-shelf uh, packaged mask RCNN, you can throw it at some, at some data, and it will give you this. So for the rest of this talk, I will instead focus more on geometry, and uh, how can we solve the geometry part in a better way. So s let's start with some basics. To get the geometry of a scene, we need to localize landmarks or objects correctly in the 3D world. For, for this, we need sensors, and these sensors have to measure distance and angle. Some sensors can measure both distance and angle. Are we done? No? Maybe we want to use some other kind of sensors, in some case. If we can only measure distance, uh, then we will only know the location of the landmark up to some circle in the, in the world. So what do we do then? Add some more sensors, we get many multiple circles, and then we can just look at the intersection of these to find the, the object. A process called trilateration. Well, in vision, we're interested in cameras. And what can a camera measure? They cannot measure distance, but they can measure angles. So if you know for each camera the focal length, uh, lens shape, pixel density, and other parameters, you can get the mapping which map maps every pixel to ray through 3D space. And this ray will describe the direction from which the light ray came. So we know that the landmark is somewhere along this line. So what do we do? Add some more sensors. Then we get two lines, and where they cross, there's a landmark. This process called triangulation 
is the principle behind structure for motion. Structured light sensors such as the Xbox, Xbox Kinect here and the uh, stereo camera such as our, our own system. Uh, right. The big problem with this approach is that we need to, to localize the same object in multiple images at the same place. And this was long uh, kind of a hard problem. It was not only until the 90s when algorithms such as SIFT came, which could robustly detect the same feature in multiple images and then describe them with similar vectors so that we can match them and get these kind of correspondences illustrated by the lines here. And using this, we have the same object in multiple views and then we can just do this triangulation. So now deep learning has, has come about and kind of solved all problems in a better way than we have done before. So obviously some guys took some neural network, threw it at this uh, feature problem, and then they were able to train it to predict this, uh, like a score map of an e image of how interesting this point is. How easy is it to, to, to localize this point in another place? So this setup is kind of similar to object detection network. Works, works better than SIFT. Are we done here? Uh, yeah, we'll skip this, uh, go to the next. <laughs> so if we, if we only can localize images and then do triangulation, then we will have to rely on some geometry in the second step, which is handcrafted. Can't we do it end to end? So what these guys did is that they look at this camera model. You remember this ray here? And what they do is they, they detect features in the image space, and then they put it in a 3D map of the world at all the places where it's possible for it to co have come from. And then after doing this, so they take multiple images from different views, extract some kind of feature representation, project it into the world, and then fuse it with the recurrent network. Apply some 3D convolutions, and then they can actually predict the voxel occupancy of this object in the world. This is an end-to-end -end approach using only deep learning to extract the geometry we seen from multiple views. So now, are we done here? No. What if you have only one camera and you want to reconstruct the scene? So in this case, it might seem impossible, but there's one way to handle this. And this is using knowledge about the world. So if we know that m multiple landmarks in the image come from the same object, and we know the relations between them, that is the distances, then the equations work out so that we can actually solve the complete pose. But how do you program this knowledge about objects into your algorithms? That is very hard. So this is where deep learning can really shine, or other machine learning problems. Uh, yeah, so, so these are, by the way, called 2D image to 3D representations, uh, correspondences, which means that for each 2D location, we know the 3D vector of this point within the object's own coordinate system. This is called 2D to 3D correspondences, and it's the basis for many algorithms. So some guys tried this. They deployed a, th a three-stage three pipeline. Uh, first, do instant segmentation of the scene to extract objects of known shapes. And then use another neural network to predict for each pixel the 3D coordinate of that point in the object's own coordinate system. And then just add some maths, and you have the pose of all the, all the shapes. This is quite uh, impressive, I think, uh, but it relies on you knowing the exact shape of each object before seeing them. Um, yeah. So at Cinevity, we have a similar problem. We want to do monocular 3D object detection. And in this setting, you need to first detect all relevant objects in an image, and then you have to like, put a tightly fitting 3D bounding box around it in the 3D world coordinates. And the contrary to the, to the previous uh, slide, in this case, we do not know the size of the, of the objects here beforehand. So this image here, I'm not sure whether it's a toy car just 10 centimeters in, fr in front of the camera, or if it's like a giant car one kilometer away. It's an ill pose problem. Um, it's also, I mean, so how do you go about solving this? One kind of uh, naive way to do is just to, uh, to use uh, 
like an end-to-end -end approach. Take your best deep learning network, throw in some images, and then have it spit out 3D boxes on the other end of it. Well, to me, this is kind of naive and unnatural. Instead, you want to combine this with the geometric model, like this two-stage two approach here. So why is it unnatural? Well, if I ask any of you to, to tell me what is the x-coordinate of this front car here, what is the horizontal displacement, it's not really easy to do that in an accurate way. It's much more easy to just l point out some landmarks on this car. For example, if I ask you to point in the image where is the wheel, you could probably do that quite accurately. So what you need to do is to build prior knowledge. Uh, no. Sorry, I got a bit distracted here. <laughs> Where was I? Yeah. So it's it's not easy to 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 predict the like the end representation x y z directly. So what we did is to add some more easy tasks, like pointing out some key points of this car, maybe guessing its size and so on. Uh, so one the main task we gave it was to map three D points to two D pixels, and this is kind of the opposite to what we did before. Uh, like the, the previous slide where the model took 2D pixels and predicted a 3D vector, we want to take a 3D vector and predict 2D points. Uh, and this requires you to understand the full context. Uh, so in this case, we had to adapt the model design accordingly and think about th things as uh, perceptive field and so on. So really, build any prior knowledge into the model. For example, in this case, instead of having the network learn both about cars and mathematical geometrical principles, just have it learn about cars and then you like program the maths into the model directly. Uh, that is kind of the key message here. So this this is this model in action. You will see on the bottom the actual input. We have visualized some three D box detections in the point cloud from the LiDAR. And this point cloud is not used for inference, only for visualization. And this turned out to work much better than we expected. So we were um, happy about that. Um, and this is, is an example of 3D scene understanding where we both model geometry and semantics at the same time. But is it possible to do more like an end-to-end -end naive black box approach? Yeah, it might be. So here we studied monocular dense depth estimation. And the task here is to take each pixel in the image and then predict the depth of that, Im uh, of that pixel, like the distance to whatever object is depicted there. So just then we just took more or less a fully convolutional big neural network, feed an image, and have it output an image, which corresponds to the depth. What we also did is to add uncertain estimation parameter sigma here, and then interpret these together as a Laplacian distribution, and then we can train it using cross-entropy laws. Uh, and in that way, we can at the same time get a feeling of the uncertainty for each pixel and the depth of each pixel. And as a side effect, this kind of model trains more robustly than naive, uh, like simple regression uh, training. So we, a quick word about that. Uh, I've talked to many students and machine learning pr practitioners, and uh, the kind of how do you view your tool? How do you view, view your uh, neural network? Many people seem to seem uh, to look at it only as like a very good function approximator, a general powerful tool that can map uh, some kind of data x from one space to some other target domain y. Uh, a lot of people. Doing machine learning has a big and good uh, like background in uh, in maths and probability, but they have seemed to forgot it. So I want to encourage you to think about it more like an inference engine, to actually extract all the kind of information you have in the, in your input data. So given a sample, you should be able to predict posterior distribution of y instead of just doing regression, uh, like we did in this mono depth video. So, um, a summary of what I talked about today is that 3D scene understanding requires semantics and geometry. 
For semantics, you could probably just use machine learning straight off. For geometry, you can combine machine learning with geometric models and constraints. And if possible, learn them together. Also, think carefully about model design. Uh, this might seem like an obvious thing, uh, but I think most people working with machine learning can take an extra look at their actual problem and the actual model they're using and think about how, the, how they can adapt the model to better fit the task th they're doing. And add any pro prior knowledge about the world or about mathematics for that sake into your system. And uh, finally, predict distributions if possible, not point estimates. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Eskil. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Anyone? We're all looking for some coffee, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, do you like to elaborate a little bit? Oh, oh we have a question. Yeah, thank you for the talk. And I was wondering if um, you've also had some experience in, well, you described in scene understanding is more in, the, in understanding objects. Uh, mm. But have you, have you some thoughts or ideas on a specific case like understanding, yeah, when it comes to humans in specific? Humans? Uh, yeah. When it comes to humans, uh, you have to find a model of a human. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to model the shape or their intentions? So when it comes to shape, what you have to do is to find some kind of model, maybe like a skeleton, to find the pose. That's a very common problem in, in computer vision. Uh, modeling intentions of humans is also very important for like self-driving car applications. Uh, and that is an entire area. But yeah. right, Thank you. OK, great. Uh, if there's no more questions, we'll have a coffee break. Uh, and then we'll have two more talks here uh, after that. It's half an hour. And the last applause for you, Thank as you. well. Thank you, Eskil.